Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here, and welcome to day eight of A Fortnite of Film, a vlogging marathon where I shoot a different roll of film every single day. This is the result of a successful Kickstarter campaign and dozens of generous donors. Many of you have signed up and have been following me on Instagram stories to vote for which film I should shoot each day, and that's fantastic. First couple of days, I was getting maybe 60 votes. I think I had over 120 votes for the last uh, set of films that I put up, but that's actually for tomorrow. But today I'm taking over and shooting my favorite role of film, Portra 160. Now, one of the things that I've said is that if I've shot the role of film before, I'll try and challenge myself in other ways. I did this in my Ilford Ortho Plus video, and I think it worked out great. I shot reflections in the glass and stuff like that, and it gave a really cool abstract feel. I'm really happy with the results and I'm definitely gonna try that again when I get a chance. So what's gonna challenge me for today with a film that I've shot a whole bunch? One of the things about Portra is that it's great for rich color all across the spectrum. Uh, you can shoot all sorts of things with it, but it is called Portra and it's called Portra for a reason and that's because it renders skin tones beautifully. For the last few months, I've been searching for a model and you would think it's easy, but it's really not, especially when you're looking for a certain type of look. But I found somebody and I'm so happy to be able to introduce you to her today. It's gonna to be fantastic. Now the original plan was to shoot her at sunrise and that didn't work out. It's raining outside and it's a complete overcast. It was supposed to rain yesterday and it didn't, so, it decided to rain today instead. And yeah, sometimes life throws you a curveball. So we're gonna totally take natural light out of the picture, no pun intended, and do this in the studio. I am really excited and nervous about this because I have never shot medium format studio color portraits before. This will be new to me on multiple levels. I've done a lot of portraiture in the past, but it's been families and events, and that's a completely different ball game. For my portraits today, I will be shooting with my Pentax 6.7. I've got a 200, a 105, and a 55 millimeter lens, but I'll probably just be sticking to the 200 and 105. But yeah, nothing to do now, but get this camera loaded. I figure while I'm waiting for Danielle to show up, I will show you my lighting setup, at least the first setup that I'm going to do today. So I've got two Alien B B800s. One has a strip light on it, and the other has a large soft box on it. And then I'm using a nice long black seamless paper backdrop. I've got my Fujifilm XE2S set up here. Um, I'm going to fine tune my lighting before I switch to film. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, that this is cheating. Well, tell that to Richard Avedon that used Polaroids before switching to film. It is common practice, and there's no reason why I should just make it that much harder on myself. Studio photography is a fine-tuned machine. It is very easy um, to go from, this looks great, to this looks like hot garbage. And with only 10 shots on my Pentax, I wanna make sure that I get it just right. Okay, everyone, that, uh, that wraps it up. I got all my 10 shots and I am so nervous to see how they turned out. Even though I use my Fujifilm to help pre-visualize the, the lighting, there's still always the chance that it doesn't work out. I'm going to be heading into the dark room right away. But first I wanted to thank Danielle for coming out on such short notice and where can the nice folks find you on the internet? I am the darning darling on Instagram. And I just show vintage wear and 
the things I make. That's great. Thank you very much for your time. And I'm heading into the dark room now. Okay, folks. Moment of truth. Film is soaking in photo flow. I'm going to let it sit there for another 20 seconds or so. And then we're going to take the film out. Okay, folks, I just poured out the photo flow. And from here on out, it's only going to be a single take. Shake the last bitty bits out. Take the film out. Pop the center column out. Toss it in the salad spinner. Give it a whirl. Okay, here we go. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I don't, I mean, I don't wanna give my hopes up too much. But initial, initial look. It looks really good. Obviously, now here's the thing. I don't know if I mentioned this already, but I had never hooked up my Pentax 6.7 to strobe lights before. And I didn't know if it was going to work until I took the first shot. Yeah, okay, so... I'm happy so far. The first thing was to ensure that the shutter synced up properly with the strobes. That has definitely happened here. The The next thing is just that, um, do the colors turn out? Did the colors turn out properly? And I won't know that until the film's dry and I've got it in the scanner. You don't have to wait though. Here are today's highlights. Okay, everyone, I really hope you enjoyed those photos. Um, I think they turned out really good, but let's talk for a few minutes about a couple of things, unexpected results and personal expectations, because I think this needs to be addressed. First, we'll handle the easy one, which is unexpected technical results. One of the first things that I didn't anticipate with the film was the tonal range, the amount of data between the darkest points and the lightest points. So while I was doing my pre-test with a digital camera, I, and I really should have anticipated this, I did not anticipate just how much more of the background was going to be shown in compared to the digital version. In the digital version, the blacks are pretty crushed. Um, the backdrop is almost completely unseeable. And while Danielle was lit pretty much the same, there was a lot more data in the shadow detail than I expected. And normally that would be good, but it's not something that I anticipated, so it's not something that I necessarily wanted. So during the editing process, I spent a lot of time pre-scan, bringing those blacks back, and then also in Lightroom further 
creating that contrast. In the initial negatives, they actually looked quite washed out. And I was really nervous about that at first because while the negatives looked good and the photos looked good, I, I had a pre-visualization in my head and it did not match the negatives. Uh, the other thing about the scanning and that whole process is that not every scan was created equal uh, when it came to white balance. At the Epson V800 uh, software wants to, wants to do a whole bunch for you. And that includes white balance. And you have to sort of take it back. You have to take back what you think should be there as opposed to some random algorithm. So some ended up with a green tint, some ended up with a magenta tint, and you had to balance that out. And some of the balancing was pre-scan. So you would make your adjustments before the scan itself, and then you would finish off in Lightroom, get all those fine details worked out. I should have expected that because I do quite a bit of pre-scan editing on all of my photos. I crush the blacks, I sometimes bring back highlights, and I definitely move the slider of the mid-tones in order to create rich tones. Where this is different is there is a very specific result that needs to be consistent, and that's Danielle's skin tones. There isn't room for interpretation there. It's either her skin tone or something with a green or magenta or a blue uh, cast, and you don't want that. But there might still be some variation between the photos. In fact, there probably is some slight variation. But I think I did a really good job with the experience that I have and the time that I was given. I hope you agree with me. Definitely give me your thoughts in the comments below. Now let's talk about personal expectations when it comes to uh, performance and art. Today, my brain just shut down. When I got those initial results and they weren't exactly what I had in my mind, I was, I was upset. I was truly upset for the first time today. Not the normal setback that you see me on camera where I'm like, well, you know, Sometimes life just throws you some lemons and you got to make some lemonade like a true bearing down of performance anxiety was like on my shoulders today and I, <laughs> I even took a nap. It was it was serious and I want to share that part with you because I don't want you to think that this is I don't want you to think this is easy. This has been an incredibly challenging time for me. It has been exactly what I need, which is being pushed outside of my comfort zone, being pushed to my creative limits, and performing consistently and over and over again without time to overthink things. That's one of my biggest downfalls, is I overthink things, and that's why some of my videos in the past have taken way too long for me. I need to just act. And when I did 30 days a night, it was one of the greatest things that happened to me creatively because I had to act, act on a consistent basis without time to stop and overthink things uh, because tomorrow there's going to be another roll of film. I made this video once called uh, Better Done Than Perfect is Bogus or something like that. And I used to believe that, um, that you should make it perfect. But now that I've had more time to think about it, it's, I don't, I don't believe that anymore. I think you need to create something and get to a certain point. And then when your anxiety takes over and you're looking at all, all these super fine details, you need to say, okay, stop, get this thing out and move on to the next thing. Sometimes you just need to take your creative little vessel, your little thing that you made and you need, to, you need to put it out into the world and move on to the next thing. Otherwise, you'll never put out a next thing. You'll constantly be tinkering and fiddle, fiddling with it. Make your refinement in the next project. Yeah, that's why 30 Days a Night was 
the perfect project for me because it didn't give me time to overthink things. I had to make the thing, I had to put out the thing, and then I had to move on to the next thing. And that's what's happening again, is that I am pushing myself to the limits creatively and physically. And today I had a break. Today I was like, oh my God, what if people don't like this? And I just had to decide that it's not always going to be 100% what you see in your head. And some of the unexpected results of these photos, after I was able to separate myself for a short amount of time and go back to it, I actually really loved it. And, and I mean, you, you shouldn't consider yourself a fraud just because you get an unexpected result and you like that result. That's part of what photography is about, is getting unexpected results and being like, I like that. I'm going to include that. I'm going to keep that. And I've talked about that in this series, that it's not just what you keep, it's what you omit. Well, if you have an unexpected result and you decide to keep that, that is part of your creative process as well. I hope this is coming through. I'm, I'm just, a lot of these ideas are forming today while I've had this epiphany and breakthrough, and I hope that that this is translating. And if you need clarification, just tell me, I don't know what you meant by this. I don't know what you meant by this. Please clarify in the comments. I reply to almost all of the comments. So if you're not the type of person that usually leaves them, I promise you, you'll get a reply from me if you give me well-constructed criticism, for sure. So that's where I'm at. Um, broken, bruised, um, but digging deep to keep going. Uh, from a mathematical standpoint, I've just passed the halfway mark today. I'm going to be doing day nine tomorrow, which puts me over the 50% mark. And I've got to dig deep now and get that energy and keep going. And tomorrow's going to be another hard day. I asked you guys if you wanted me to shoot with expired Ektachrome or expired Provia. By a vote of, I think, 62%, you guys chose Ektachrome. So that'll be interesting. And... It's a medium format again, so I'm only going to get 10 shots. And if you include bracketing because it's expired film, that's even less. Um, the challenge rages on. I hope you guys don't mind me not doing a darkroom montage today as well, but I thought it'd be kind of weird going from one musical B-roll session straight into another. So I thought I would give you this instead, my like my personal thoughts. And I'm not used to being this open either, so I hope you appreciate um, putting my heart on my sleeve today. And until tomorrow, stay classic. Every time I'm a bit of a pessimist, the universe likes to prove me wrong. <laughs>